Hey guys, welcome to your art lesson. We're going to be doing an artist spotlight this week. This is a lesson for third, fourth, and fifth grade. We're going to be talking about an artist named Keith Haring. Who is Keith Haring? Keith Haring was born in 1958 in Pennsylvania. He was the oldest of four children. He has he had three little sisters. His dad was an artist, and Keith became interested in art when he was very young. Now, he experimented a lot with uh, different ways to draw and different types of art as he grew up, but he said it wasn't until he moved to New York City in 1978 that he really found his style. Now, one of the things that we who live in Atlanta might not be very familiar with is a very extensive subway system. And in the subway, when they were going to cover up an ad, they would get someone to quickly paint it black and then later they would put the ad over it. Well, Keith Herring, when he saw these black panels, thought that they were a great place to display art. So, what does that mean? That means, yes, he was a graffiti artist and yes, he was arrested numerous times for that. I am not saying to go out and start drawing the walls in public places. But this is how he got started, so we do have to talk about it. So you can see there, there's a picture on the left of him in the subway drawing on one of the uh, on one of them. And then the middle is the year he drew a 1983 Happy New Year New York City kind of thing. And it did get people's attention. He did become recognized and art galleries and places started to recognize him and they wanted his artwork. In fact, some people, if they had the chance, they would remove the entire ad off of the wall and they would sell those. That's also illegal, by the way, to remove the ad, things like that. But you can see the picture on the right is uh, an example of his artwork on one of the big uh, TV screens up in Times Square. So. He made his art for people. He wanted his artwork to be seen by everyone. He did not want it to be just for the rich and mighty. He wanted everyone to look at his artwork and understand it and enjoy it. You can see a picture on the left of him starting to paint a mural. But then on the right, there were many occasions in which he would get large groups of people and volunteers and they would paint the rest of his. He would do the black lines and they would paint, fill them in. But another thing he did was he opened something called the pop shop. He didn't want only rich people to be able to get his art. Now this is back in the 80s, so you can see some big influence on this here. Uh, he became known as the guy who painted on walls. And you can see that he's got um, lots of artwork that would be up on the walls. And in the pop shop, he opened it so that people could get his artwork. There could be buttons. You can see there's uh, there's um, t-shirts on the wall. There's uh, posters, things like that. He didn't want his artwork to just be available to the rich and famous. He wanted anybody to be able to get it. And there's one account from a a uh, woman who at the time when she went in there with her mother was she was a little girl um, she and her mother were walking through the store and she said that she was a little just overwhelmed she thought it was really cool but then someone came and talked to her and asked her about what did you think of the artwork and she said oh I like it it's got colors I like the people and um, it turned out she was talking to Keith Haring himself because he liked to just visit and see the people in his shop too and uh, even though this is recent this slide is from recent times uh, Ikea sold some of his artwork for a while these are some of the things you could find they were uh, wall decals I think that's like a, um, the one up at the top that says court is like one of those little boxes and then they had little um, coat hooks that look like the tails of uh, dogs so let's talk about some of his artwork. You can see that he's got a lot of people in them, but look at the people. Are they very specific or are they very undetailed? I want you to stop for a moment and look at it and think why might he draw or paint 
or create people who didn't have faces. He also liked to do a lot with action. You can look at these pictures and you can see there's a lot of action in it. Even though his figures were just 2D, it still looks like they're doing something. They're moving. The one on the top left that's got the most people in it is called the dance. Then you've got the people who are sitting on the heart. And the one on the, on the bottom is called friendship hug. And his colors. He used bright colors. Vivid colors. If you uh, have been noticing, usually he would just do solid colors. Every now and then you might see some polka dots in his pictures. But he did very bright, very vivid colors. Things that really stood out. Unfortunately, Keith Haring did pass away in 1990. He got very sick and he was unable to recover from it. So while it's been a long time since he passed away, people still use his artwork and recognize his artwork across the world. And that's one of the reasons why we've studied him a little bit today and you guys are going to be working on drawing something inspired by him. So let's think for a moment. There were three things to focus on for his artwork. His people. Did they have faces? Well, except for that one picture on the very end, for the most part, no. Why do you think that? See, I think that uh, for those of us who said that it's so that you could imagine yourself on them, I think you got it on that one. How did he create action? He had a lot of those little lines that would appear around people. They were action lines, which is a very comic book related thing. And then colors, what kind of colors did he use? Yes. He used a lot of black outlines, but he used very bright colors with it. So when you are planning your picture, you too are going to be using bright colors. So let's talk your challenge. Create a herring inspired poster. Now, when I say poster, I mean just a piece of artwork that fills up your paper. I, you don't have to go out and get a huge poster board. But let's talk a little bit about creating a herring figure. Now, this is a four-step process. I did this on the computer to make sure that they all stayed the same size, but I'm also going to walk you through this in a moment. Step number one, just draw a stick figure with a head. Make sure it's a circle. Make sure they're doing something. If they're just standing there, it's not gonna be very interesting. Number two is make an outline around it. Then, number three, fill in the outline. And the last thing to do is to create like a kind of a, um, an outline of color around your figure. So I'm going to show you one of the things that I've drawn. This is my example. I'm going to get some more light out here. That's a little bit better. I want to show you my example. This is okay. Try not to make anybody dizzy there. So this is my example of a Keith Haring inspired picture. So let's talk about how I made it. As soon as my camera catches up and focuses, you got it. You can do it. There we go. So you can see I took, I did three people. In fact, my guy who's running from the other slides. And I'm going to show you just quick how I would do one of these. So you're going to need a pencil. That's like the most basic part. Uh, if you have color pencils, that's fine. If you have markers, that's fine. If you have crayons, that's fine. But you will need something to color with. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to make something new. Let's see what kind of... Uh, oh, I know. I'm going to draw... So I'm going to do the head. I'm going to draw body down. And I'm going to have leg, leg. And I'm going to have up and up. And I'm going to make it look like my person is jumping. So that's pretty easy. You guys have drawn stick figures before for me. Now we're going to add the outline. I'm going to make that head a little bit bigger. But not too much. Then I'll make an outline, an outline around around so 
So now my stick figure at least has more thickness to the body. And I'm going to take my crayon and I'm going to color him in. So I'm going to color all of it in. I'm going to make sure that I cover up my lines. So I'm going to go there. Now you're going to notice that the ends of his hands and feet are going to look a little boring. They're just, they just stop. So I'm going to add just a little bit of a circle for a hand. And I'm going to make kind of an oval going this way for a foot. I'll come back down there. I'll finish coloring in this part. Come down here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did on this side. I'm going to put a little bit of a circle for the hand and then the oval that comes down fill it in for his leg and now look I've created a very Keith Haring inspired character now I'm not done like I said before if you want to do those little action lines it helps make it look like they're actually doing something I'm going to put it down here and down there as well make it look like he's jumping and if we look back at my picture I also created a ground for them to stand on. So let's do some other things with this guy. I'm going to take, I'm going to use a different type of material. So I did the first part with a crayon. The second part, I'm going to do it with a color pencil. And you can see I'm really just doing the same thing I did even earlier as I made an outline around him. I'll keep going and I'll fill that one in and it helps add some of that color to it And I knew they have a little take a little bit. So that's one where you blended it last. So now I've got my inspired figure who is doing something. He is still jumping for joy. And I can make it look like he's jumping even more so by drawing the ground underneath him. And now we have a pretty good Keith Herring inspired character. So, those are the four steps. That's just the easy reminder. Um, if you have any questions, you are welcome to email me at afrans at namanaacademy.org. I will be posting another video about how to take pictures. Just easy, uh, easy steps or um, steps to make your artwork look uh, better when you take pictures of it. Um, look on your seesaw in third grade and fourth and fifth grade look in your Google Classrooms for your assignments and I will see you guys next time.